Let's move on to lesson three, living mulch systems and undersowing. Living mulch cropping is the practice of growing a mixture of crops where only a portion of the harvest is for sale. Living mulches are cover crops planted either before, with or after the main crop and maintained and are maintained as a living ground cover throughout the growing season. Growing an understory crop in combination with a yielding crop has many benefits. Living mulches can be perennial species that are maintained from year to year, such as grass mixtures in vineyards, for example, or orchards. Um, ideally, the, the growth of the living mulch is suppressed when the main crop is growing and increases as the main crop matures or when it is no longer present and harvested. Living mulches have the potential to keep the soil covered with living roots throughout the crop season, thus reducing herbicide and tillage need and improving soil structure, regulating water content, reducing erosion, to name a few. According to the paper Living Mulch as a Tool to Control Weeds, quote, living mulches have the potential to form an important component in agroecosystems and can be a useful tool for weed suppression in sustainable agricultural systems, including many useful advantages such as improvement of soil structure, regulation of soil and water content, enhancement of soil organic matter, carbon dynamics and microbiological functions, reducing soil erosion, soil enrichment by nitrogen fixation, insectarium for many beneficial arthropod species, and enhancement of populations of soil macrofauna. Living mulches also have the potential to suppress wheat growth, contribute nitrogen to the main crop, and reduce economic risk." Unquote. Earthworm populations are a good indicator of overall soil health and benefit, and benefit greatly from living mulch cropping systems. As shown in the article, Earthworm Community in Conventional Organic and Direct Seeding with Living Mulch Cropping Systems by Pelosi, quote, there were 3.4 to 12.5 times more anectic and epigeic earthworm biomass in the living mulch cropping system. Shannon Wiener and equitability indices as superior, were superior in the living mulch cropping system compared with the conventional and organic systems. Shannon Wiener Diversity Index, short H, is a measure of diversity that combines species richness the number of species in a given area, and their relative abundances. Especially in grain production, we can use living mulch systems to fill a gap in feeding and protecting soil microbiology that occurs when grain starts drying out as part of the ripening process and stops photosynthesizing. Here, and, uh, here an understory living mulch carpet, for example with grasses and clovers, are ideal to take over the task of feeding the microbiome as the grain ripens. During this time, the clovers and grasses can use the strong sunlight coming from the ripening grain. If this gap is not utilized with a living cr crop, we lose the potential of the abundant sunlight available during the summer months, which is ideal for photosynthesis. As already covered, Undersown living mulch systems provide a multitude of benefits. On-farm implementation with diverse, eat, with, with diverse cash crops can be demanding and require experience. Now let's dive into the challenges and considerations of living mulch systems. Timing, seeding rate and variety selection or species selection need careful consideration. Mistakes can lead to a failure of the undersown crop or worse, your cash crop. Through, for example, too much competition for water, nutrients and sunlight between those two components. Diverse mixtures are available and should fit to the accompanying main crop. Typically, undersown mixtures contain grasses, for example, late perennial ryegrasses, Italian ryegrasses or Timothy, legumes like, for example, white clover, yellow clover, crimson clover, or winter vetch or serradella, or, on, or other species like phasalia, gold of pleasure, um, and, and herbs. Perennial rye grasses are most commonly, commonly used for this purpose. Low growing and late blooming varieties, which don't go into seed until grain harvest, 
and don't interfere with mechanical harvest are best suited. In addition, forage mixtures of ryegrass and clovers can be used for undersowing. In general, to achieve an economically working living mulch system, first, less competitive main crops have to be combined with varieties weaker in growth, and second, more competitive main crops have to be combined with varieties stronger in growth. Rag egging practice living mulch systems at Schloss Tempelhof Farm. Let's go into the implementation. To give you a, a, an impression of the timing um, for sowing a cover crop and how to handle it after, for example, grain harvest, let's take a look at an example from Schloss Tempelhof Farm. In mid-October, winter grains such as winter rye are sown. Because of the compromised germination rates when sown in early spring and to keep the system practical, we sow our living mulch together with our cash crop at the same time. This means we sow a mixture of about 90% perennial ryegrass and 10% white clover as our living mulch at the same time as the winter rice being sown. Um, and the winter rice serves in this case as our cash crop. This mixture is not suited for late sowing, for late sowing dates, since varieties have to be well established before frost comes. Enough moisture at the time of germination is a key factor for establishing a successful living mulch cover. At harvest time, the rye should be cut as high as possible above the grass leaves to avoid re-moisturizing the grain seeds during the harvest and threshing process. This is a picture of two weeks after grain harvest where the soil is covered and the remaining living mulch stands still and is photosynthesizing. The biomass growth from undersown mulch cover crop, from an undersown mulch cover crop can be grazed, cut for silage or just flail mold. Sowing the following winter crop, for example winter, winter wheat, the, um, for the sowing of um, the following um, crop, like for example wheat, the field can be fertilized and tilled as described in lesson 2, minimum tillage and surface composting. If a forage mixture of ryegrass and clover was um, used for undersowing, after harvest of the grain crop you can use the living mulch for 2-3 to three years as a fodder cover crop without any further tillage. Other widespread examples of living mulch combinations used in large-scale agriculture are corn combined with, for example, Italian ryegrass and or subterranean clover, or oilseed rape in combination with, for example, frost kill undersown mixtures of common veg and Egyptian clover, or fenugreek, lentil, chickling pea, white clover and fava bean. So very diverse undersown mixtures are possible. To summarize this lesson, Living mulch systems provide a solution for keeping the soil maximally covered and closing the gap in feeding our soil microbiome, among others. For this to fruit, the right management strategy and suitable species selection must be used. The competitive ability of living mulches for weed suppression um, requires a strong focus. The challenge is to find living mulches that effectively outcompete weeds without negatively competing with our main crop. Timing of when to sow and subsequently harvest the main crop together with the living mulch requires good planning. Ideally suited are crops, crop combinations where the living mulch mixture helps cover the ground, provide soil structure and maximally utilizing sunlight without greatly interfering with the performance, ripening and yield of the main crop. Thank you for attending this lecture.